Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. So as you guys know, the vast majority of large gatherings, which includes retro gaming conventions, modern gaming conventions, over the past year have been canceled because of the obvious, the pandemic that's been going on. Now, hopefully in the not too distant future, we will be having retro gaming conventions. I'm supposed to do one at the end of July, Classic Game Fest. But over the past year, there was hardly anything. And very understandable, there were some virtual cons, some online gaming conventions, and I was fortunate enough to participate in some of these, including the Uplink Long Island Retro Gaming Expo from last year. And I also participated in the Cleveland Gaming Classic from November of last year. And the Cleveland Gaming Classic was kind enough to let me, uh, they gave me permission to put the interview I did with them uh, where we talked about, you know, retro gaming, modern gaming, video game character names, ri book writing, and a bunch of other stuff. It was a great interview, far-ranging. The guys did a great job. Uh, they were kind enough to let me put that interview on my channel, which I'm going to present for you guys in just one moment. If you are new to the channel, like I said, if you could subscribe. Uh, if you, another way you can support the channel, you can order books direct from me, such as the NES Omnibus Volume 1. And Volume 2 is currently available for pre-order, which you can do so at brettweisswords.com. You can check out my 100 Greatest Book. I've written a dozen books. If you want to check those out, that would be awesome. You can also become a patron. All that stuff is in, uh, you can find those links in the description of this video. So without further ado, check out my interview at the Cleveland Gaming Classic from November of 2020. I think you will enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in another video. Enjoy the interview. As you know, we've also got Brett. There he is. I heard. Hey. I heard. Hey. He's there. He, there How are he you, is. Mr. Weiss? <laughs> I'm doing well, thanks. Just trying to figure out this technology stuff. No, I'm no, old school. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> no, you're good. You won't yeah. have to worry about it once Skynet takes over. Then we're, we're going to go. <laughs> it's all over from there. Yeah. So, Brett, you're going to just see me. Unfortunately, in Zoom, you have to look at my bald head for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. But you're also I'll survive. You, you'll survive. It's not too shiny right now. Let but us you, know if we if you get a glare. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, but you'll also hear two other voices, too, that people can see watch on the stream. So we've got both Kevin Molnar and Kevin Cabarello as well, who might be firing away some questions. So how's it going, hey Brett? Glad, hey, glad to have you here. Definitely. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. All I see right now is the Cleveland Gaming Classic logo. Oh. oh. Well, that's, that's a plus. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a plus. Uh, yeah. Well, and I can see myself. Oh, that's all right. Well, we can see you. People on okay. on the uh, on the stream can see you, so it's probably better that for way. For better, for worse. For better, for worse anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks Thanks for joining. People that don't know you, you mind telling us briefly about yourself, who you are, and what you do, and why you're here? Well, I've been gaming forever since 1975, since I discovered Pong and Midway's Gunfight in the arcades, and then Christmas of that year. My um, cousin got Pong, and that blew me away. I didn't know you could play video games in your house until he got Pong for Christmas. And then I you know, got a click of it in 82. All my friends had Ataris and television, and I've just kind of Eras grown up through the console. Stay current with each one. And I've been interested in reading and writing since I was a kid, thanks to my mom being interested in reading and taking me to bookstores. So those two things just merged. And I've been writing professionally about video games since 1997 when I started with the All Game Guide. That's, cool. that's pretty cool. It's cool when, like, thank you. Yeah, when you do, like, as a child and you like your parents' influence, like you said, going to bookstores and stuff, doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember doing something like going to the library and picking out books, and then it turns into it's obviously a passion, then it turns into something, which is the which is a cool story. Oh, yeah, thanks. And I've written, I uh, just finished my um, 11th book, I believe it is, the NES Omnibus Volume One, oh, which goodness. is, uh, I have the advanced copy here, and the book will be out. Um, 
early December, early to mid-December. That thing is ginormous. I ordered, <laughs> I ordered that. That is awesome. I, I think I backed oh, that. Yeah, I backed oh, that wow. on Kickstarter a couple months ago, so I'm excited oh, about I that. Oh, I appreciate that. But I think that's A through L, is it? A through L, yeah. yeah. It was going to be A through M, and the publisher realized that it was too weighted. It was going to be the two books oh, were going to be yeah. two different sizes, so they made it A through L. Because my SNES omnibus books, as you can see here, that worked out A through M and N through Z. And then... Um, for, so for you know, just the way the library was, uh, A3L worked out with the NES. That's funny. So. I would never thought about it because you have to think like there's S, probably a lot. Of I S feel games. like S has S, yeah, to right. be the like, winner. Everything's either like Star or Super. Or, are are yeah. you incorporating like does Mario fall under M or does Mario fall under S, S for Super Mario? Right? Or? I go by the exact game title, so okay, Super good. Mario. So yeah, there's got to yeah. be a lot of S's. There's got to be a ton of S's. Yeah. And of course, the original Mario Brothers game is going to be in the second volume for in sure. the NES True. omnibus. Wow. So, how do you know offhand? Like, how many are in that A through L? I can't. Even, I'm trying to like, uh, I, over 350, I, yeah. 360, something like that, uh, around that number. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's basically a uh, write up for every U.S. release uh, for the NES from A through L, supplemented by quotes from other sources, magazines, uh, websites, things like that, and uh, something I call insider insights, which are nostalgic stories from other writers. Um, so. My first series of books was actually the very first uh, series of its type, the classic home video game series. Mm. This is sort of like an encyclopedia style oh set of goodness. books. Uh, there's three volumes, and they're just like, you know, just a write up for each game. Well, with the Omnibus Books series I've started, we're talking, you know, much bigger thing here with full color, you know, oh. screenshots and the whole deal. So I've, uh, you know, when my first classic home video games book, came out in 2007 uh this book this was my first book in general first book i ever wrote uh 2007 classic home video games 72 through 84 covering atari ColecoVision, and television and all that good stuff that was my first book and that was when retro gaming was just starting to take off with the wii shop channel the angry video game nerd and a number of other factors uh wii ebay shop. prices were starting to go up on games at this point and so my book just sort of coincidence or, or whatever you want to call it or just because i was in the retro gaming scene for a very long time it sort of came out around the time when retro gaming was really starting to take off now this and it was the first it was the first book to completely catalog and describe and review you know every game for such classic consoles as the intellivision ColecoVision, atari 5200 leonard herman beat it beat me to the punch with a 2600 with his abc to the vcs but my book series uh, had a lot of firsts as far as the genesis Neo Geo, Turbo Graphics, and all those systems being fully covered for the very first time. Now, did you get to play the majority of these games that you covered, or? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I wrote for the All Game Guide beginning in 1997, mm -hmm. and I did a ton, a ton of work for them, uh, doing uh, descriptions, synopses, reviews, and um, I was an editor for the All Game Guide as well. That was this massive database whose objective was to catalog, describe, and review every game for every console, every computer, and everything. So I, I did that for several years. And just growing up with all these games, I had to borrow games from store owners. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, uh, you know, order instruction manuals. You know, I would get lots of instruction manuals online. You know, I'd order a lot of, of you know, say, um, you know, NES instruction manuals, 100 of them off eBay, you know, just because the cartridges are so accessible. But the manuals with all the information is harder to find. So I had to pull a lot of strings and, and get a lot of, uh, had to borrow a lot. And I've got a pretty massive game collection myself. So, yeah, absolutely. Any game specifically that you remember that gave you a really hard time, whether it be trying to find information or trying to find the right words, what to say about it in, in any of your books? Well, there's definitely a challenge with a lot of the role-playing games because I'm not a big role-playing game fan in general. Mm -hmm. And so I'll spend time, some time with those games, but I'm not going to grind away for 100 hours. I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do just sort of a general synopsis for some of those kind of games. But you still get a good idea of what the games are about. Okay. And games like Hide Light and, Hide Light. Um, you know, there's just some real grind fest that, that, that just are, are very uh, kind of a pain to go through. But then I have a lot of fun, you know, with games I love, like, you know, some of the more simple stuff like Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers and, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you know, referring to the NES and uh, Popeye. And, you know, so I have a great NES. I have a lot of fun writing these books, but there's definitely some slogs uh, with some of these games. <laughs> a, you know, I'm not a big fan a of the point way and click to say it. <laughs> uh, genre or the, you know, strategy games and all that. I, I prefer action titles, platformers, uh, shooters and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, there's a 
it's fun, but it's also a lot of work too. Did you ever run into a game? You, you mentioned RPGs, but did you ever run into a game? It's like I, I just can't play this. This is what is this? You have to. He has to play. Yeah, it. It's so broken. Well, I have yeah. to. I have to. So what I'll do if if, it's, if a game is just so broken or I'm just so terrible at it, I'll look on YouTube for long play videos. Okay. okay. Uh, that way I can get through a level. Yeah. Without you know, I'll find out you know how to, how did they do that? How do they get through the level? Or at least I'll get to see some of the later levels that I couldn't access. Or I'll use cheat codes or whatever. Yeah. You know, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that, that comes up sometimes, and I'll just look online at the long play videos because you get a really good idea of what's in later levels. And if you can't access the hose or you just aren't good enough at that game or you can't find the right cheat code or whatever, you can at least see, you know, later levels of the games, uh, you know. So it works out that way. Yeah. How good. long does it take yes. to kind of go through that process? You know, like you've got to go through the entire NES or SNES library playing these games. Like how long does that take? Well, each each book, uh, let's see. So, I've, my first book came out in two thousand seven. It's two thousand twenty, and seven, eight of my books are, are gaming books. So, you know, each one takes a couple of years to write. Oh. And I'll typically play the games in the evening, and then uh, get up early the next morning, uh, fresh to write. Um, so that's how that process works. And then do you works. take notes and as you play, or like how does that process? Yeah, work? I'll, I'll, yeah. I, I've got spiral notebooks all over the place. I'm, I'm taking notes as I write. And, uh, I mean, as I play the games, I'll take notes about, you know, particular, you know, the controls or the graphics or sounds or whatever, you know, just as I go. And that, that you know, without the, the notes really help. Some, there's so many games to keep track of and to catalog and document and describe and critique and everything that de taking notes definitely helps. Is there a game you would recommend fully? I mean, just obviously I, you mentioned Super Mario Brothers and, like, obvious, some of the classics. But, like, mm -hmm. was there a game that hasn't gotten the recognition it deserves that you feel like it's just it's one of the best games and I don't understand why other people feel this way? Well, uh, there's some NES hidden gems that, that people should check out. There's a game called Trog, oh, and it's I a maze Trog. game. Yeah. And a lot of people just look at you funny if you say Trog because that's kind of a funny name. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know about it. It's based on an arcade game. I and mean, I never actually saw it in the arcades back in the day, but I discovered it through, the, you know, through the working on these books, through the NES. And uh, it's a fantastic uh, maze game. And uh, it's got some interesting twists to it that you don't find in just typical dot maze game. You turn into a dinosaur and all this cool stuff. Cool. So I definitely uh, recommend that. Bucky O'Hare is a really cool oh, superhero yeah. game. <sighs> Price yeah, it's a lot of fun. Power Blade's cool. You can oh, throw Power boomerangs Blade. at enemies. That's, that's, that's a fun my favorite. One. Power Blade never got good recognition. Really? No, I don't, I don't know why. Like, should have should have. Yeah, I today. think it's I think it's a little underrated. Uh, Mighty Final Fight is kind of a hard game to find, yes. but you know, you play little ju junior versions of the Final Fight characters. So you're, you're there's naming, definitely some hidden gems there. Yeah, you're naming games that uh, for some people would be like a mortgage payment to try and find here. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some of these you may want to get through emulation and. The coolest story I have actually goes back to, it's not a great story or anything, but it's just a game that really made a huge impression on me. It goes back to my earliest book, uh, Classic Home Video Games. 7234, as I referenced, for the Odyssey 2, um, I was uh, I had I had written, I was almost completely finished uh, with the book, uh, the Classic Home Like how do you how do you convey your ideas from in your head or in your notes to the page? Well, uh, necessity really. Okay. <laughs> Just sheer, uh, you know, having to pay the bills kind of cuts through any writer's block or anything like that. And writer's block, it, I don't know if that's the direction you were going, but yeah, that was partially. I mean, I've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, it was hard. It, it definitely was harder early on. I mean, I would stare at the blank screen, the blank page, if you will. And really struggle to to know how to word uh, a review or a synopsis or whatever. And I was I look back at some of my old, you know, I kept all my old uh, writings from the All Game Guide. It's mm -hmm. defunct now, but I printed out everything I wrote. And um, I look at some of that stuff. It's pretty rough. And I, I definitely had a hard time uh, articulating what I wanted to say. You know, because that was you know it was when I first really started taking writing seriously. In the 1990s, the early 90s, I started writing some short stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that never, you know, that was just some small press science fiction and stuff. And the All Game Guide in 97 and then the Comics Buyer's Guide uh, around that same time is when I really started writing professionally. And I definitely, it was harder earlier on, but now it's it's just second nature. You know, if, I, if, I, if, if I've if i got the, you know, the notes in front of me, 
Um, I can knock out what I want to say pretty, you know, I don't say easy. It's still work. It's just, it comes more naturally now that I've done it for a long time. Do what they say is true. Read a lot, write a lot if you want to be a writer. Okay. That's mm. that's very compelling and helpful. Thank you very much on that. Um, do you feel like you, when you, okay, say, I mean, you run into kind of like the same games over and over. Like, do you feel like you you say the same exact things about different games a lot and if so how do you that's a good question i definitely had to reach for some uh adjectives you know you definitely want (laughs) to you don't want to just keep saying this is a great game or yeah this is awesome or something so i try to mix it up a little bit but then again you don't want to sound like a thesaurus either where you're just trying to reach too hard so there's a fine balance and i i try to mix it up you know where it just doesn't sound you know if you're reviewing pac-man and miss pac-man I'll look at the two and make sure, you know, I'll try to make sure they're worded differently so you're not just, you know, Pac-Man's not gobbling dots, and then I don't say the exact same thing about Miss Pac-Man, so I try to mix it up. You can only write so much about a bow on one of them. (laughs) Right. But I I, I definitely try to, you know, make it, I try to, I try to be concise and uh, informative at the same time, so uh, concision of, I mean, it's real important what words you put down. Uh, you, you, and I, I spent a lot of time editing, you know, trimming and, you know, just trying to get each one down to a science where you have all the information you need without any, you know, fluff on there. Mm-hmm. So. So oh, cool. I have a question, too. You know, obviously, uh, I think we talked about this in another earlier segment, too. Like the video game community is very not like other, you know, unlike <coughs> just the same I'll say as other communities, too. They're very vocal. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you say something, <laughs> Brett knows where I'm going. Right. Oh. So if you say. If you say something and people have a different opinion, you know, you can kind of, it can kind of go down a, There's a one. rabbit hole yeah. Yeah. in some yeah. places. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, have there been any of those type of situations where, you know, whether you're, again, inserting your opinion in review or um, synopsis of a game and, you know, has there been any kind of blowback or pushback or feedback from well, the community? Well, it's funny because some, some people, uh, so the first series of books, are, you know, on the cover, they're called reference guides, classic home video games, insert year here, complete reference guide. Well, some people complain, I don't want to hear your opinions in something called a reference guide. I want it to be like an encyclopedia or a dictionary yeah. where there's no opinions. There's just gameplay, you know, just, you know, gameplay description and all that kind of stuff. Well, I didn't think that would be much fun. I thought, you know, if I'm writing about, you know, let's say um, Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES, It'd be real hard to write that without talking about how great it is, yeah, <laughs> you know. Right. And if I'm writing about uh, um, something like, um, let's say, Snake for the Atari 2600, it's hard to write about that, which is about how broken the controls are and what a <laughs> terrible game that is. So I definitely wanted to include opinions. That makes it fun for me. I think that makes it fun, more fun for the reader. And I've also heard, you know, I mean, some people have had the other end. You know, they want more of my opinions. So. Uh, with the omnibus books, I include quotes from other sources, like I mentioned. So I'll I'll, I'll, rec- I'll quote uh, respected websites. And I'll rec- I'll quote vintage magazines. So you'll you'll get a good look at the game of how it was perceived back in the day. Uh, like Demon Attack for the twenty six hundred was just absolutely slobbered all over at the time it came out, you know. And so it was in- it's interesting to read reviews back in the day of that, just about how great it was, and just to you know does, does it hold up? So I like to. Uh, it does, by the way, uh, but I like to, yeah, I like to include my opinion and then other opinion, you know, opinions by others as well. And the insider insights, uh, the nostalgic stories that other people contribute to the omnibus books, they have their opinions as well. So I think the opinions just make the books more fun to read. Yeah. So, but yeah, I have, I have had some blowback people saying that, you know, and I've also, so with my, one of my books, the hundred greatest console video games. This is my bestseller. This covers 77 to 87. So you've got the beginning, the Atari 2600 release up to the first two or three years of the NES, you know, the test market in the first couple of years of the NES. And that book, I, the bottom line, it's my opinion, you know, what fits yeah. into the hundred greatest games of all time from 77 to 87. But I also weighed, you know, just their, you know, objective qualities and all that kind of thing. If you can call, you know, again, if you can say in a game is objectively great, if you can say that, but, um, I, uh, Mike Tyson's punch out did not make the hundred. It came out in 87. So it was eligible. And I get people like, are you crazy? That's a great game. That's one of the all time classics, but it just never resonated with me. (laughs) And I just, I just never really cared for it. The pattern recognition and all that. It's just not my kind of game. I'd rather play just the basic, 
you know, either a fighting game or a, on, a, a boxing game that's the, more the like table a fighting just flipped, game. The table just flipped over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really funny you mentioned Mike Tyson's punch out. Did you watch, or I don't know if you were watching earlier, but Kevin Cabarello did Mike Tyson's punch out blindfolded. So he flipped over I the table. I saw a little bit of he, that. Okay. Yeah. He walked out and he just, wait. But he no, just it's rammed <laughs> your car. I think he just rammed his car into the side of the house. But well, no, let me tell you what. But, but so at, yeah. the, at the back of this book, there is an appendix of the yeah. next hundred. So I acknowledge a lot of the games that didn't make the cut that people think should be in there and that I think should should have made the cut but didn't. So there's the next hundred. So Mike Tyson's punch out is in the appendix at the back of the book. And okay. I do acknowledge it as wow. one of the all-time wow. classics. But, but it, no, again, but, but, it was just... Yeah. Ultimately, it was what game, 100 games that resonated with me the most that I considered the greatest. So it didn't quite make it, but maybe if it was the 101 uh, greatest console video you games, it would have been in there. But I, I, do get, I do get a lot of uh, blowback from that, and I'll, I'll happily take it. I'll, I'll admit that. But, but, but that's that's understandable. And this is uh, Kevin Cabarello talking. I'm, I don't think you have me on the stream, but it's, I mean, for you to be able to write write these books, you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's because video games is becoming an ever popular, just growing medium. You know, it's a, uh, it's it's hard to, you know, it's 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 universally known. You know, it's 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 kind of like the the music industry. You know, things are subjective. Like to be able to kind of write things without having either a personal bias or you know something along those lines is hard. So for you to come out and say, you know, for example, that book where it's like here's the hundred greatest you know, console games from 77 to 87, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, people that buy the book, they may not, you know, completely agree with you, but in the same token, you know, you're giving them information about stuff that they may have never even considered, or, you know, it's m more information that, you know, it's a, it gives them a, a broader palette, you know, for video games, or maybe, you know, it's a, well, maybe, maybe expand upon Well, I some dark it. horse picks in there, not because I shoehorned them in just because, because I genuinely think they're great, like Turmoil for the 2600, an obscure game that's just absolutely fantastic. Um, um, and the thing is, is uh, 77 to 87 was such an interesting year because you've got all these systems that nobody really thinks much about, like the Valley Astrocade, which has a game in there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Fairchild Channel F, it has a game in the appendix at the Box back of the book. There's yeah. a really good Pong type game that was really great for the Fairchild Channel F. It didn't quite make the cut. But it is in the appendix of the back of the book. And people have told me, you know, they've discovered games. There are several Vectrex games in there for people that have never really? played that console. It's got some spectacular titles. So those made the cut. And as people told me, you know, they've discovered. And a lot of people are interested in retro gaming and just, you know, the pre-NES stuff. But they may not know much about it. Well, the 100 Greatest uh, book will give you just sort of a guidepost. You know, if you are going to explore the really old games, the Atari area era plus the first few years of the NES, what is worth playing other than the ones you've heard of, other than Super Mario Brothers, other than Pac-Man? What is really good from that time period? So I've got a lot of good feedback on that. How much or how many times do you, would you say did you have to revise that list of top 100? Oh, it was a painful process. Yeah. Um, it was really tough to, 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 to really narrow it down because there's a lot of games in the back of the book, like Mega Mania for the 2600, a great fixed screen shooter. Didn't quite make it. And I, that was, <laughs> I hated that. And that's one reason I created the appendix at the back of the book, just because there's so many games, games that didn't make it. Smithereens for the Odyssey 2. And there's just so many great games uh, in the back of the book that didn't quite make the cut, like Thunder Castle and Tower of Doom for the Intellivision are two games that hardcore Intellivision fans just worship. They're in the appendix. They didn't quite make the cut. Tarzan for the ColecoVision, a great early, early beat-em-up. You know, before beat-em-up was even a genre, Tarzan, an original game from 84, ColecoVision made the back of the book. Those are great games that just didn't quite make the cut. So it was a painful process. So, yeah, that was tough. Um, it took playing and replaying a lot of games, and, and so, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Cool, cool. Um, s switching over real quick from uh, games, have you done – I've seen you've uh, also written about uh, – you're a big fan of movies. And so have mm -hmm. you written about movies uh, and done the same thing? By, uh, trying I to haven't written any – I've got a book called Retro Pop Culture A to Z from Atari 2600 to Zombie Films. Mm -hmm. So that does have some movie writing in it. But I've written for Antique Week, a uh, weekly newspaper, for over a decade. And I've written a lot of articles about movie collectibles. And within those articles, 
I can write a lot about the history. Like I, I did a cover features for a lot, you know, like when Gone with the Wind had, I believe it, it's 70th anniversary. I did a big feature on Gone with the Wind. I wrote about aliens, um, uh, the 30th anniversary or something like of Alien, I believe it was. And just a bunch of different movies. I'll celebrate their anniversary within Antique, with Antique Week. You know, you write about the collectibles and stuff, but within that, you know, I'll, I'll write critiques and, you know, some history of the film and stuff. So I've done a ton of movie writing for Antique Week. And for the, I wrote for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, a major metropolitan newspaper, for over a decade as well. And I'm still writing for Antique Week, but Star-Telegram, I don't write for them anymore because they, they just mostly use, you know, stuff they grab off the wire to save money. Just they reprint articles from other papers, but for over a decade, I wrote, you know, movie roundups for the Star Telegram. Like if a big movie was in theaters that had something to do with zombies, I might write, you know, the ten best zombie films, or okay. uh, when uh, you know stuff like that. So yeah, I've written for movies a lot for different magazines and newspapers and stuff, but I haven't written a book yet. Maybe at some point. So kind of like the modern day equivalent to that would be the uh, on YouTube, like the Watch Mojo top ten so and so video. So okay. Yeah, I've done that kind of a lot of that kind of stuff. And plus, he, some, plus some his the Antique Week stuff. I mean, I've written up to two thousand word articles about different movies for Antique Week, so that gets a little more depth there. Any uh, like, I don't know, any special uh, articles from Antique Week like that stand out to you or anything like that? I mean, I mean, you mentioned Gone with the Wind and uh, Aliens, but uh, well, it's funny for Antique Week. I have written such an um, enormous variety of material for that magazine because I do auction reports. I do uh, like when there's a like when you hear about one of these celebrities selling off all their items, I will do uh, like a report on that, what everything went for. Mm -hmm. I like the Beatles, uh, Sgt. Pepper's 50th anniversary. I wrote a big feature on that. And man, it's just a ton of stuff. Uh, I did. I've done a cover feature for the Atari 2600 and for the NES for Antique Week. I mean, it's it is all over the map. And I've written about. Everything from like old, you know, in ancient China, they use seals that they would imprint on old documents instead of autographs. I've written about those. I mean, it's it's insane. I've written, you know, just as a professional writer, you want, you know, as a freelancer, you'll write about just about anything as long as it's honest paying work. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, as a freelancer, you just you want these jobs. So I've written about just about everything. Cool. Cool. Um yeah, it just happens to be to... video games are just about my favorite, most fun thing to write about. <laughs> and movies, to, too. You know, collect to ask all the geeky it. stuff I love writing about. I wanted to ask about the Encyclopedia of Kiss. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I, yeah. too. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, got, I got a few questions on that, too. Yeah. Uh, how, did, yeah how did that happen? Like, are you a big Kiss fan? Like, what's the. I mean, like, oh, my you're gosh. Looking at the, I'm looking, you so, know, obviously at your uh, publications and the history, and then all of a sudden there's one in there, Encyclopedia of Kiss. I'm like, there, there's definitely something there. Right. Well, I mean, in 1977, I was 10 years old. That's when the 2600 came out, and all my friends got them. In 1977, 1978, Kiss was at the absolute peak of their popularity. And, man, I could not have been a hard, more hardcore Kiss fan. Um, I, uh, I mean, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park coming out on TV in 1978 was, like, one of the biggest moments of my life as a oh, wow. kid. Uh, my, my best friend awesome. next door, we would play Kiss records on his old... Uh, uh, record player and on the big you know furniture type you know console stereo in my in my house my living room i would play eight tracks in my dad's truck and he was very indulgent there and i was just a hardcore kiss i had uh kiss posters and magazine cutouts all over my walls i made a, a kiss scrapbook i would hide uh, you know like um Kiss magazines and stuff in my school books so I could read about Kiss when I was supposed to be paying attention at school. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you, you name it. I was a die hard heart. Uh, my dad would, I would give my dad pictures from like 16 Magazine and, you know, Hit Parade and all that of Kiss, and he would take them to work and he would make photocopies for me. I would hand out at school for some reason. I mean, I was just like I was some kind of Kiss evangelist or something. Yeah. So, so, but I remember, I mean, I discovered the band in 75. I remember Kiss Alive. And just hearing nothing to lose and Peter Chris's backing vocals on that and just thinking, wow, this is the most amazing stuff I've ever heard. And I grew up rock and roll. My sister's seven years older than me and my brother's five years older than me. So I grew up as a, from, you know, when, when I was a little kid and my friends were listening to the Bay City Rollers, I was listening to Rush, Mott the Hoople, uh, Black Sabbath and all this stuff. So hardcore, you know, rock and Kiss fan from the, from, from as far as I can remember. Okay, I think the big question that follows is what makeup... Uh, which member are you donning when uh, when you're yes. following? Which one? 
Well, that's funny. I, which ones? What what makeup have I worn of the band? No, no, no. What, if you have, if you, yeah. you you're Pick going to one, a kiss, con- yeah. you're going to a kiss concert. Who you rocking? You're, yeah, mm-hmm. who you rocking as? Well, I've, it's funny enough. I've never actually done that. I've never worn kiss makeup. Wow. But my favorite all time band member by far. Well, I don't know if by far because I love the band. But I'm an Ace Freely guy, and I have been since I was a little kid. When I was a kid, most. Most kids uh, went to Gene Simmons. That was their favorite because oh, of the monster yeah, and leads, all yeah. that stuff and the blood and the fire. But, man, I was ace all the way because I just love – I was always a big science fiction fan. And I love his makeup and his costumes mm-hmm. and just how he's kind of cool and spacey and aloof on stage and just kind of loved his guitar and everything. So, yeah, I'm an ace guy for sure, makeup and everything. Uh, favorite Kiss song? Uh, probably – I just did a, a YouTube video, uh, my 10 favorite Kiss songs of all time. Awesome. And on any given day, it could change, you know, because I'm a, just a hardcore fan. And, that, and all the songs of my favorites are definitely from the original makeup era, you know, from uh, 70, you know, three when they started to 79. But if I had to pick a favorite, it might be something like, um, gosh, uh, Shout It Out Loud is top 10, oh, yeah. Shock Me is top 10. Uh Man, there's just so many. Uh, and, you know, I get rock and roll all night in Detroit, Rock City. Those are so great. But I kind of got burned out on them, strangely enough. You know, it, I don't get burned out on too much of my favorite stuff, like Ozzy or Kiss and all that. But Overplayed? Some of that oh, stuff that perhaps? actually got some mainstream uh, plays, uh, got a little tired of. But, but yeah. And there's a song on Love Gun called Then She Kissed Me. It's a cover oh, of an yeah. old 50s tune. And people hate on that song because it's... 50s and kind of cheesy but i love it that's one of my favorite songs and um yeah it's just great i love destroyer and love gun dynasty so many great albums okay this may be blasphemy but i'm gonna switch it up uh, on it you have the power to uh totally destroy and eliminate one kiss song from existence mm. are you doing are you taking one out of it is there just one song that's just you could thanos snap it out of out of here <laughs> <laughs> um Burn, Bitch, Burn is really bad. That was a non-Makeup Era song. It's just got obvious, stupid rhyming, and it's just an ugly song. So, yeah, I could, I could do without that one. All right. Burn that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lazy, lazily written song, and it's just dumb. As a so I'll take that one out. Yeah. 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 Um, you also too in that piece there you mentioned you do uh, you know I know you, you do a lot on YouTube I want to give you a chance because you do a ton of stuff not only in terms of publications and your writing but you are incredibly active on your YouTube channel mm-hmm. I want to talk about that for a second yeah it's kind of funny I never really thought I would be doing this many YouTube videos um, but you know the publishing industry is not what it used to be even 10 or 15 years ago when I was just writing constantly so many of the magazines and newspapers I used to write for are gone Mm-hmm. They just don't exist oh, anymore. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still writing for Old School Gamer Magazine, for Antique Week, and several other publications. Um, I'm, I just recently uh, wrote most of and edited a ColecoVision magazine uh, that's going to be coming out pretty soon as part of the Opcode Vision Super Game Module. Uh, ColecoVision Fan Club uh, is coming out, and I'm, I'm the editor of that magazine. But anyway, publishing is not what it used to be so i don't have nearly as many writing jobs as i used to be so i'm just sort of trying to evolve with the times and so many gamers go to youtube you know just for entertainment or information and so i've transitioned over there and i started a podcast a few years ago but my podcasting partner passed away just unexpectedly and so Hmm. yeah it was it was a weird deal he was a good friend of mine great guy hardcore ps4 fan and i would bring in the old school he would bring in the new school, so we had kind of a cool thing going. And so I took a couple of years off from any kind of YouTube stuff because I was just really dismayed by that and didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And I thought I got to thinking, so what 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 would separate me from other YouTubers? And uh, you know, I, there's so much gaming content and it's so crowded. I need to separate myself from the pack a little bit. And I said, well, I'm super old, <laughs> unlike most YouTubers. <laughs> so that's one thing that's different. And I grew up with this stuff and I have stories to tell. So that's why. Uh, it's my channel is just Brett Weiss, but the logo is tells from a retro gamer. And so I tell stories about, you know, just what it was like gaming in the seventies, eighties and nineties, just different, either finds I made or Christmases. And I've interviewed, had some pretty cool interviews on there. I just recently interviewed the executive producer of the game chasers movie. Oh, okay. Okay. Congrats. okay. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun. He came over, he, he lives in Dallas and I live in Fort Worth. Right. So he just came over to my house and 
we hung out. He's a good friend of mine anyway. And so, yeah, I just do all kinds of stuff. I've interviewed John Lester on my uh, channel and, um, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. I was recently on John, uh, the immortal John Hancock's channel. So that was great. And, uh, but yeah, I'm just, I'm having a lot of fun on there and I, I don't think I would do it if it wasn't fun because, you know, I'm not hardly making any money off of it. Uh, but, but it is nice exposure, you know, and it, and I've gotten some more readers. Uh, people have discovered my books through YouTube and every writer wants more, you know, most, you know, maybe some, weirdos not, notwithstanding most writers want more readers and want to sell more books so youtube has helped you know just bring uh you know my branding everything to more readers so that's been nice but overall it's just a lot of fun i'm having a blast doing it i'd probably put stuff on there far less frequently if it wasn't fun that's cool yeah that's fun you're putting stuff out all the time i know it yeah. been a lot of, i've been catching up with the people scamming over the xbox series x's and ps5s <laughs> right. and well sometimes i'll do vlog stuff no, i'll just good. get on here with no no post-production no editing and i'll just get on here and talk about what's going on in gaming yeah, great. but then you know once or twice a week i'll do an episode and i'll submit that to my editor and he'll add some gameplay footage and some a little humor and stuff and that's great i really appreciate it uh this guy named james pledger he he owns uh pledger designs and uh, you can find that online where he does a lot of really cool branding and logos and video work and stuff. So he's, he's been great. Nice. Um, and my son, yeah, my older videos, oh, yeah. my son would uh, edit uh, and he was just doing it as a favor. You know, he would put in screenshots and some stuff like that. So the, props to him for doing stuff? that for, for a couple of years there. He didn't, he wasn't a fan of it, but he's a good kid and, I say kid. He's in his twenties. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But uh, but he's he's great. He 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 really helped. He he taught me, you know, about how to upload. Because I'm old school, man. I, I am super old school. Yeah. So many of my friends are just so much more up on technology than than me. And so he, you know, taught showed me how to upload videos to YouTube and how to edit things on your phone and within YouTube and all this stuff. And so I owe him a lot for just being on YouTube at all. That's great. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about the modern gaming world nowadays? Like, I mean, with the what, Call of Duties and all the like, mm -hmm. the the new stuff. What do you do? You think it's like uh, they're taking a step forward with everything that they're doing with the cinematics, or do you think they're taking a step back where it's more about how a game looks as opposed to how it plays? Well, I think there's positives and negatives to the modern scene. Um, it's, I mean. Forgetting about independent projects for a moment, just talking about mainstream gaming, like going into Walmart or yeah. GameStop mm -hmm. or whatever, like we, you know, back in the day, we'd go to Toys R Us or uh, Funko Land. Just doing that. Uh, modern games, they're harder to get into for me because you have to sit. I mean, sometimes it takes a couple of hours mm -hmm. to even feel oh, like yeah. you've really played the game mm -hmm. because there's so much story and you're waiting or, or even either for it on. to update yeah. or upload or to, to get to a point in the game where you're actually doing something. There's so much uh, exposition where you're not actually doing much. In the old days, you put in a game, you're pretty much fighting for your life right away. Oh, yeah. And I really, I really enjoy that immediacy of the older games where you're like, you know, you play Robotron or Defender or, uh, you know, even Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man. You are on the run immediately and you are instantly having a good time. With the newer stuff, it, it's just more of a, a, a slow burn and you're, you're waiting for this and, uh, and it's just an investment of time. You know, if you get a new game like um, Breath of the Wild, you play it for two or three hours, you really don't feel like you've done a ton. But if you play the original Zelda, you play you uh, you spend that much time with it, you feel like you've gotten somewhere. So oh, yeah. anyway, and I'm not my sense of direction isn't the best. So with modern <laughs> games, when you're uh, you know I'm actually better at Twitch games than I am at open world games because I'm uh, even at my advanced age, <laughs> better reflexes than I do uh, you know as, than I do. Um, uh, directional, uh, you know, I, I like my GPS in my car uh, and my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <That way. laughs> so anyway, yeah. I, I do prefer older games, but I do have a switch and my son has a PlayStation four and, um, I'm thinking about getting a PS five just so I can have a, you know, be up on what's going on. And so I can, uh, play rags Morales. Cause I really like Spider-Man on the PS four. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I do some modern gaming. I, I love, you know, just going back a few years, Bayonetta was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I love the Ninja Gaiden remake on the uh, remake on the 360. So it is Gaiden. Um, you know, so I've I've, I've played damn. quite a few uh, modern games and have enjoyed them quite a bit. And there's nothing, you know, stuff like God of War. There is, you know, that's you cannot go back to the old days and do anything like that. 
I mean, it's stuff like that. I love the 3D third person hack and slash, like Maximo Ghost of Glory on the PS2. Oh, yeah. So there are definitely Maximo's some a great one. Uh, major advantages to the modern stuff. You know, just the epic sque- sweeping music and the storyline and all that. You know, so if I'm if I'm in the right frame of mind and I have some time, and I just want to kick back on the couch, I can get into some modern games. You know, it's just probably eight times out of ten, I, I come into my game room. I'm either firing up Atari or PS2 or something like that. So. But yeah, I'm all over the map, but uh, mostly older stuff. But yeah, there's, like I said, there's positives and negatives about the modern scene. But um, I, you mentioned Call of Duty. I, I was other than Halo, in the old, it's funny. Doom, Halo, Dark Forces. I did those are great, and I had a lot of fun with those. But for some reason, Call of Duty and some of these other first-person shooters, I'm just not very good at them. <laughs> you know, just the, I'm not a huge fan of first-person shooters. Just, it just, I just never. The controls just don't work for me. It felt weird with Halo specifically because I, I felt like as the franchise progressed, it slowly turned into Call yeah. of Duty. Like I love the first couple of them. Oh, and, yeah. And I, fought, I, first I call three. those first two Halo games the first-person so shooters for people that don't like first-person shooters. Exactly. They just have a mm-hmm. great feel to them. So you brought up one thing, and Kevin and I, we, we, uh, we're looking at each other for a second because I feel like you are hopefully the source of truth for this since you've is. written enough about it. Okay, so I've got two questions, and I'm doing a time check here too. Gaiden... Or Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I, I typically. No, you got to lock in. One. I go back and forth. Oh, I, think no, yeah. probably, yeah. I think it's probably Gaiden. You're the guy. I think that's how you're, you're supposed guy. to say it, but I, but I'll it? find myself saying both. See, he, he writes all these books. He, he's got to cater on both both yeah, sides of the yeah, coin here. You know, yeah, he, he has yeah. to play it safe. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna well, I said in. it's probably Gaiden. Okay, I say Gaiden's nah. probably the way to go. Then, but I just okay. I, I catch okay. myself slipping and saying both. Okay. So we'll put it that way. And then all right. Ryu or definitely Ryu. 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 Like rye bread. Like rye, rye bread. Ryu. Ryu. That's what I've always you. said. I may be wrong. I've heard people say Ryu. I've heard very important people say Ryu. So I could be wrong. Is I it, just figured if you're going to ask, you know, but this is, you'd probably be the guy that would know. Is, yeah. I got a stupid one. Is it Guile or Gully? <laughs> uh, Guile. Blanca right. or Blanca? No, we, we, we stop. stop. We'll be here Blanca. for another hour. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I'll no. say Blanca. End or key end. <laughs> no, stop. stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we have derailed. Uh, this has been great, Brett. We appreciate you coming on. Sorry about yeah. the little technical hiccup we had there, too, but we recovered. We, we've been doing Happens this. Happens uh, all the time. Yeah, we've been yeah. we've been at this for almost, uh, well, probably closing on to 20 hours now or so, so... <laughs> It's well, I appreciate the marathon effort you guys are doing. Yeah, appreciate so you being on we, with us. Uh, sincerely, happy to do it. Yeah, appreciate you uh, being here. Is there anything you want to plug before you go? You know, where people can check you out, follow you on social media, websites, YouTube channel. Go ahead and plug away. Absolutely. So, going to keep it simple on YouTube. Just look for Brett Weiss. You can see the spelling right there: B R E T T W E I S S. Just subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. It's free and easy. And if you want to do a deep dive and check out my books. Just go to brettweisswords.com. You can find links to all my social media and, and my books where I can, uh, you know, autograph books. I can mail you, send you one in the mail. Yeah. Very good. And then uh, the book coming out, it's, a, it's NES Omnibus. Omnibus. It's a A through L. And, and do you have a set date on that coming out next month? or NES Omnibus Volume 1. Amazon says December 8th. Okay. But uh, I'll probably get my copies from the publisher around then. Uh, and then I will be mailing them out as I sign them. Like, so uh, just look for it in early to mid December, probably. And it is, you know, if you want a, a signed copy direct from me, uh, just go to brettwestwords.com. You can find the link to all my books. And with books I send out in the mail, I will typically send extras, like maybe a, one of my signed Twin Galaxies cards or a magazine or something else, just to get just a little bonus item or maybe some other signed item or something. So and check there, it out. And there's, I don't even remember how much I paid for the eighth row. Like, was it around like 50 or something? It's, it's a $50 book. Yeah, it's yeah. super reasonable. I mean, like you, you massive have hardcover like, book with it's over 2000 photos. It's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was looking, I'm like, this is, and I'm not just saying this, but it's hardcover. The, the photos and quality and the color, like, I was like, okay, yeah, done. This is great. <laughs> like a good Christmas. Well, thank you. Yeah, it yeah, is looks... by Schiffer Publishing. I'm going to give them a shout out. Okay. They do. Cool. Now, I submit, obviously, the text, and, the, and, and I submit the images as well. Uh, but Schiffer designs the book. They print. They have the book printed. They publish it and everything. So it's very perfect. This is a major publisher that has all their books in store, or, you know, a lot of their books in stores and everything. My 100 Greatest Book, every, uh, this is Schiffer also. 
Every Barnes and Noble in the U.S. ordered at least three copies of this one, so that was nice. Oh, that's awesome. uh, so yeah, Shipper, major publisher, so they definitely do quality work, very durable as well. Cool. Well, thanks again, Brett. Really appreciate it, and thanks for helping us out by joining the stream and promoting what we're doing for United Cerebral Palsy. Uh, we'll let you go, Brett. Have a great rest of your evening. All right, I'm happy to help, and thanks you guys for having me on. Thanks again, it. sir. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure. We'll see you. You bet. We'll talk to you later. All right, thanks, Brett. So you bet. That was cool. Another great interview. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I love how these interviews, you know, it's like we, we bring somebody on, we talk about one topic, and then we just... It just goes off the rails. No, but in a good but way. But it's good, yeah. It's good oh, yeah, stuff. yeah. So. I was going to, I, 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 I kind of bit my tongue on it, and I'm kind of glad I did. On, on the, When we were talking about Kiss, <laughs> there was a part where Kiss went to professional wrestling. And oh, they, dear, 2000s? Yeah, yeah. WCW. They had, uh, <laughs> they had did a, <laughs> a professional wrestler rep that represented Kiss, really? called the Kiss Demon. And, oh, it's it's infamous. He debuted in he a, a kid. streak of talking about wrestling. Fashion. Yeah, that's so, right. we yeah. should have had our own wrestling panel and sat here, but we we, we don't have the time for no, it. But we we've, we've been not. able to fit it in a little bit. I'm just saying that that was. But he was great. Oh, yeah, man, another just, fantastic. Just very yeah. informative, especially on you know the the first three, four, five generations of of console gaming. That, that was that was great to have Brett on here today. The only so, question I didn't get to ask him was you know what's your favorite console? You I, know, I, like, I wanted oh, I, yeah, I had that written uh, down here. It was like Desert Island. You got one console. What do you what do you pick? Yeah, why? I was going to ask so, a favorite console sure. or favorite game. Um, I could definitely tell. I think he's got an affinity for, you know, it sounds like whether the Atari or the television, you know, some yeah. Kind of yeah. stuff. But, I mean, he's written, obviously, extensively about everything. So He seems I, really yeah. passionate about everything except for Mike Tyson's punch out. But <laughs> yeah, we're, we're standing. He's, yeah. get, he's getting a pass for me. You know, it's, 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 he, yeah. that was a... That, that was a great interview. Seems seems like a great guy. I think, well, like I said, he had it had it in the appendix. You know, it's uh, so it's he, he thinks it's okay. So yeah. it's you know it's I and I think he's okay. It just didn't yeah. resonate with him, which is a fair that's a fair answer. Not plus, everybody's gonna be a fan of. Him. Plus, he's uh he's the second uh, interview we've had this weekend to you know name drop the the Fairchild Channel F, which just makes me super happy. That's so it's, uh, right. So that that was great.